Strange animals have consistently evolved in the wake of mass extinctions, from the Devonian mass extinction which led to a radiation of terrestrial animals, and most famously, the sudden end of the Cretaceous which led to the rise of mammals. One radiation that however often gets overlooked is the one that occurred after the aptly named Great Dying, with the beginning of the Triassic, where 96% of all marine and 70% of terrestrial animals became extinct. This extinction event left vacant many ecological niches, which were quickly exploited by the animals that did manage to survive, such as the therapsids and the archosaurs which would be the main beneficiaries. The latter being the archosauromorphs were the group that diversified the most after this event, and many of these animals are all worthy of their own video at some point in the future. One of these animals was the rather peculiar Charovipteryx, a genus of gliding animals that took this form of locomotion in a way quite unlike any other known animal. The holotype was named Charovipteryx mirabilis, Sharov's wonderful wing, currently known by this single fossil which is thankfully well preserved in dorsal view and being largely complete, as well as leaving some impressions of integument. Coming in at the small size of around 25 centimetres, this little skeleton is already a most remarkable find, a fine example of an animal that emerged after the greatest mass extinction of all time. But what was most remarkable was the strange features this fossil possessed that's really made this an incredible Triassic find. Found in 1965 in the Majajin Formation in Kyrgyzstan, dating to the Middle Triassic around 225 million years ago, most of the animal seems fairly typical, that is until you get to the legs, which are noticeably long, and through skin impressions preserved a membrane in between them and the tail known as a patagium. This is unique, as unlike all other gliding animals where the membrane required surrounds the pectoral girdle, it instead in Charovipteryx encompassed the pelvis being composed of skin with no scaled covering. From looking at the holotype of Charovipteryx, you may have noticed that the forelimbs are noticeably absent, even though the rest of the skeleton is well preserved. Ozimek Volans, named in 2016 and presumed to be a close relative, does have some implications in regard to Charovipteryx's life appearance, in regards to the forelimbs. Some authors claim to have not only found elements of the arms, but enough to ascertain that they were proportionally short, and others suggest that there is no trace of them and that they were present at some point, but were damaged and modified during the specimen's preparation. Either way, the description of Ozimek did preserve the forelimbs which were indeed quite small proportionally, and due to this, it is likely that Charovipteryx was similar. When it comes to the method of gliding, there has been some debate on whether or not other membranes were present in front of the legs or even along the arms. Recent evidence has found that there are aerodynamic reasons to suspect that the hind limb membrane was not the sole flight surface. Studies modelling the gliding performance of Charovipteryx found that the centre of lift was located too far back along the body to safely glide and land without the aid of additional membranes an anterior flight surface, perhaps along the front of the thigh or along the arms as suggested, would negate these issues and permit safer landings. If the forelimbs did support a membrane as stated, they could have acted as an efficient means of controlling the pitch stability, very much like an aeronautic canard. This allowed for an even better flight performance than the living gliding lizards, being able to achieve shallower glides and more precise turning. From this, it's apparent that Charovipteryx was a delta winged glider, akin to a living fighter jet, able to control its movement efficiently through arm and leg movements. It can be easy to say that Charovipteryx was unique because it was a one-off and an evolutionary oddity that died off because it was so strange, but for this specimen to exist in the first place, there must have been some pressure and advantage for this anatomy, otherwise these animals would have simply died out as soon as it was developed. To develop this configuration, the ancestors of Charovipteryx likely started out as climbers, that with proterosaurs already having a more developed hind limbs, were able to better leap from branch to branch, and with more leg rotation than other gliding animals, simply developed in a different but nonetheless effective way. Aside from the unique gliding method, Charovipteryx overall was quite a small animal, with the fossil we do have being around 25cm in length, being very thin and narrowly built, with a small, elongated skull, with the teeth being spaced widely in the animal's jaws, as well as being covered in overlapping lizard-like scales. The taxonomy of Charovipteryx alongside other Triassic reptiles has often been convoluted, 
They are most accepted to be a part of the order of Uliarchosaurs known as the Proterosaurs, alongside the possibly closely related Ozimek, another small reptile that may encompass the family known as Charovipterigidae, although they've also been thought to encompass the family known as Tanistrophiidae alongside the equally bizarre Tanistrophius. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these peculiar animals, and that you may have learned something new. More videos will be soon to follow, and I have plenty of ideas which I'm sure you will all enjoy. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.